Hey, Michael. Hi, Andrew. My question, uh, I've heard you you spoke on this before, but I wanted to give more clarification. In 1 Timothy 2 and 15, when the Bible talks about just saved through childbearing and they continue in faith, love, and holiness and modesty, uh, what is exactly the context of that? Because I've heard anything from erroneous, like women can have children to salvation. So I just want to know your take with that. Yeah, well, it's certainly a, a crazy sounding passage at first glance. And let me read it so that the radio audience is aware of what we're talking about. It says, uh, Adam was formed first, then Eve. Adam was the one, uh, not the one deceived. It was the woman who was deceived. And then it goes on, it says, but women will be saved through childbearing if they continue in faith, uh, love, and holiness with propriety. And so, you know, at first glance, you look at this and you say, wait a minute, Brother Paul, are you telling us that women will be saved through childbearing? If I take that literally without any consideration for the words used here and the context here and the background, the issues that were going on, then I could think, okay, men are saved by Jesus. Men are saved by the cross and the resurrection. Men are saved by the blood and the risen Christ living in them. But women, I guess there's a totally different system for women. Women are saved through having children. Women are saved through childbearing. Well, of course, that's not what it means, and this is not a rewriting of the gospel message. You dig a little deeper, and you find out that there was some false teaching surrounding the church in that day. This young pastor, Timothy, has been inundated with what I like to call a women's liberation movement from 2,000 years ago. Uh, it relates to the worship of the goddess Diana, and uh, they were taking the Genesis account and switching it. They were flipping it, reversing it, saying that it was the woman who was created first uh, and that Adam was created second, and therefore the woman is greater and the man is lesser. And then they were saying that the woman was not deceived, only Adam was. And so the woman is smarter and the man is not as smart and therefore women should lead society and dominate society. And then lastly, along with those same false doctrines, they were teaching that women should not bother getting married, having children, having a family uh, because they're above that, they're beyond that, they're greater than that, and women should not stoop so low uh, to get married and have, have kids and have a family. So with that in context, then, this is why Paul is correcting these false doctrines. He is saying Adam was formed first, then Eve, because they were saying the opposite. So he is correcting them. And then he says in verse 14, Adam was not the one deceived. It was the woman who was deceived. He's saying that to correct them because they were saying the opposite. And then in the final verse, verse 15, which is your question, he's also doing the same. He is correcting that false doctrine, that false belief. And they were saying that women should not bother uh, having a family, raising children. And he is saying that, as you look at the original language here, women will be fruitful in childbirth, or women will be fulfilled in childbearing, or women can have a fruitful life in childbearing. So that's what he's trying to say. They had been hearing from these worshipers of the goddess Diana that women should not bother with a family. It is nonsense, and they should lead society. And Paul is saying, no, no, don't sell families short. God designed marriage. God designed family life. And women can be fulfilled in a life that includes childbearing if they continue in faith and love and holiness with propriety. So uh, that's what he's saying there. He's saying childbearing is not an obstacle, that families are not an obstacle. They are an instrument that God designed and you can certainly have a fruitful life. So it's all in the face of the heresy that the young pastor Timothy was having to deal with. Paul writes this letter to correct those false ideas about women and men. So I hope that helps bring the clarity uh, you were looking for there, my friend, and call us back anytime.